Today, we're so excited to have on the line with us Jeffrey Hollander, who, as he calls it, he's the chief inspired protagonist and the executive chairperson and co-founder of 7th Generation. And 7th Generation is the leading household brand for clean products, clean cleaning products. And Jeffrey, there's so much about you. You have a, 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 a blog called Inspired Protagonist. You've written books like What Matters Most and Naturally Clean. And you've sit on many, many major boards. There's so much to talk about you, but I really want to hear your voice and our listeners want to hear your voice. So welcome to Green is Good. And thank you for being on today. My pleasure. I'm happy to be here. And so, and Jeffrey, why? How did you get involved? I mean, how did you start 7th Generation? Just for our entrepreneurs out there and our budding entrepreneurs, how did you start 7th Generation, and how is it going, and where is it going to go in the future? Yeah. Well, I started 7th Generation 21 years ago. It was actually the third business that I have started. And 7th Generation grew out of a book that I wrote in 85 called How to Make the World a Better Place, a Beginner's Guide. And I was really looking at all the ways in which we as individuals can make positive contributions to the world and the idea of selling products that help us lower our impact on the environment was appealing and that really was the foundation of the company. Got it. And how many products do you have now and what do they clean? Sure, we sell around 100 products. They cover everything from laundry and dish products, spray cleaners. Uh, in January, <clears throat> we're introducing the first line of disinfectants that are made from completely natural ingredients. We also sell tissue paper products. We sell baby diapers and wipes and uh, organic tampons for women. And are, is there any particular store or all major stores in, uh, carry your products? Well, I would say every store but Walmart and Costco. Gotcha. Okay, fair enough. But I also want our listeners to know that they can access your where, where you sell your products and the great uh, breadth of products that you sell by going to your wonderful website, www.7th, spelled out, 7thgeneration.com. That's just a little plug because I want our listeners to learn more about your products and be able to buy them uh, because they're going to learn on this show why they should be using your products as opposed to some others out there. Tell us, though, what is the alternative? What are the other type of products like out there? You know, and, and why is it important for, for our listeners and consumers at large in the United States and around the world to be buying a cleaner, non-toxic cleaning product? Well, first, you know, most people assume that cleaning products are tested by some government agency to ensure that they're safe. And that's not the case. Uh, no third party tests cleaning products to make sure they're safe for you to use. Oh. Secondly, uh, most people assume that uh, if they wanted to, they could look on the label and find the ingredients of these products that they're bringing into their home and exposing their family to. Well, unfortunately, there is no requirement that there are ingredient disclosure on the label. So you don't know what you're bringing into your house. And third, uh, from research that's been done by many independent organizations, uh, including the Environmental Working Group and Women's Voices for the Earth, we know that traditional cleaning products are made with chemicals that are toxic and in many cases carcinogenic. And the theory that companies uh, go by is, well, there's only a little bit in there. So, you know, who's going to be concerned if there's just a little bit of a carcinogenic chemical in your uh, toilet bowl cleaner? Well, the problem is that this little bit of these toxic chemicals uh, add up over time. And in many cases, uh, if you were to mix or spill some of these products together, like chlorine and ammonia, you would get a chemical reaction that was so strong that it could send you to the hospital and might even kill you. Well, you know, my, when we were leading in the intro of the show, Mike brought up what one of our previous guests of a couple of weeks back uh, spoke about. It's that body burden. Yes. Uh, and, 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 you know, and that's we're learning as we have more and more guests on the show that are focusing on this issue. And, of course, you're the leading expert on this issue. I mean, 
uh, if I'm not mistaken, even just a couple days ago, wasn't there an op-ed in the New York Times just on this issue? There was, and and on our website, actually, uh, you can read about my personal body burden because I have had my body tested, uh, and it was sad for me to find out that despite the fact that I eat organic food, despite the fact that I live a pretty healthy lifestyle in Vermont, my body is contaminated with lots of toxic chemicals uh, that that I have accumulated over time. So safe to say that when people buy a product like yours, your great 100 products or so and that's ever growing, they're not going to at least expose themselves to the toxicity that exists in other products. No. When we formulate seventh-generation products, uh, and first, by the way, uh, we list all the ingredients on the label so you can check for yourself, but we formulate our products with a very limited group of chemicals that have been tested by third parties to ensure they're safe. And we were talking earlier that there's 80,000 chemical compounds that are used to make consumer products. Unfortunately, a teeny fraction of those 80,000 chemicals have ever been tested to make sure they're safe. Well, we, of course, only use that handful of products, that those chemicals that have been tested to be safe. And we have uh, standards to ensure that our cleaning products aren't going to pollute your air. One of the challenges we have, you know, most people think that their home is a safe place to be. Well, unfortunately, according to the EPA, the air in our home is two to five times more polluted on average than the air outside of our home. And uh, this is in large part because we bring into our house cleaning products, personal care products, and other products that we buy in the grocery store. And then those chemicals in those products pollute the air we breathe. And that is translated into a huge increase in asthma and allergy and other types of chronic chemical sensitivity. You know, um, Jeffrey, I grew up in New York City, and we had a famous politician in New York named Daniel Patrick Moynihan, and he used to say, all politics are local. I don't, I mean, this, talk about the Green Revolution being localized. I mean, what you're talking about uh, is, affects all of our listeners and, and their children and their family members and friends. I mean, there's nothing more local than the, that our, our home and our office conditions and our car conditions and the cleaners and the stuff that we use in and around them. And unfortunately, uh, we have to take responsibility ourselves for our own safety. And we often think that there is someone looking out for us to make sure that we only can purchase products that are safe. Well, we know from cigarettes that that's not true. Uh, Unfortunately, you can go into the store and buy all kinds of incredibly dangerous products. So we need to educate ourselves. One of my favorite uh, tools to help people make good decisions is something called the Good Guide, which you can download onto your PDA. You can even go into a store and take a picture of the barcode, and within a second it'll give you a rating of uh, how healthy and safe the product is. So there are tools, but we need to be responsible. We need to protect ourselves and our families uh, in our own homes. Well, well, you know, Jeffrey, you, you, we, since we have to take action ourselves, we're going to take a break to a commercial, but then we're going to come back on the other side, and we're going to talk about how you are leading the revolution to take responsibility and the, and the new concept that you are going to put out there and tell our listeners about that puts puts our choices back in our own hands. Come on back to hear Jeffrey Hollander tell us about how green is good. If a little green is good, more is even better. Now, back to Green is Good with John Shigarian and Mike Brady. Welcome back to Green is Good. Today, we are so lucky to have Jeffrey Hollander, who is the co-founder of 7th Generation. He's on the line with us, and, and anyone wants to see Jeffrey's great products, 
7thGeneration spelled out dot com. www.7thGeneration.com spelled out. And also, before we went to a break, he talked about the good guide. And if you want to see the good guide and download it, it's www.goodguide.com. Hey, Jeffrey, before we went to a break, you started talking about taking it back people taking it back and putting control back in our own hands. You have a very exciting, again, you're shifting the paradigms. You have a very exciting new program and new concept. Why don't you tell us about it and and share with our listeners what's on, what's, what's on tap and what you've come up with. Sure. Well, we are so concerned that everyone be entitled to purchase safe products. We created something called the Million Baby Crawl, and uh, we jokingly say that while these babies can't stand up, they can stand for something. And what they're standing for is to demand that the government ensure that products and chemicals that are put on the market are tested to be safe in advance. So you can uh, go online to our website or the Million Baby Crawl website, and uh, you can create a crawler. You don't have to have your own baby. You can create a crawler to march to Washington to demand that we support new legislation that ensures that chemicals are tested before they're put in consumer products. Perfect. So our listeners can go to www.millionbabycrawl.com, just like it sounds and it's spelled. And what is the new legislation you're talking about? Has it already been proposed? Is it already underway, or is it in the works? Well, the new legislation has been written and is sponsored by uh, Senator Lautenberg of New Jersey and Boxer of California and Waxman of California. And it's called the Kids Safe Chemical Act. It will be introduced into Congress in the next week or so. And, you know, business usually hates new legislation. That's usually what they're fighting. And seventh generation knows that not everyone will be perfect about buying safe products, and we want to eliminate those hazardous chemicals from the marketplace and dangerous products. So this legislation would rewrite the law to do something very simple, to basically say that we need to make sure that chemicals are tested for safety before they're used in consumer products. Gotcha. And how has the response been since you've started putting this out and you came up with this concept? How has the response been so far? Well, we, I think so far, have about 80,000 people that have visited uh, the site. Wow. And... Uh, we have gotten a tremendously positive response because, you know, people uh, don't just want to be scared. They want to be part of the solution. They want to be part of providing uh, a better future for their families and their children. And supporting the Million Baby Crawl is a very simple, quick thing you can do to make a positive difference for generations to come you know that is just unbelievably true and inspiring and you know mike and i read through the some of the materials you sent us prior to you coming on the show tell us a little bit about how many kids are poisoned you name this thing million baby crawl brilliant idea jeffrey how many kids are are unintentionally poisoned every year in, in america well unfortunately uh the the statistics are 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 pretty scary uh in the average home, there are 63 different hazardous chemicals. So in the average home, uh, you will find 63 chemicals that are incredibly dangerous. 50%, actually a little over 50% of the human poison victims every year are children under the age of six. And we find... Uh, that children end up in the emergency room thousands and thousands and thousands of times a year because they have been exposed to toxic chemicals, often in cleaning products, that parents have brought into their homes not realizing that they could endanger the lives of their children. Gotcha. And so, you know, you want people to get involved by going to millionbabycrawl.com how tough is this is this going to be, do you believe, to get this bill passed? And what happens if it passes? What's next then? 
Well, first of all, I think that we have a very good chance of of passing this bill uh, because it is 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 something that that sort of seems like mom and apple pie. I mean, why should we not insist that chemicals be tested before they're put into the products that we use? And I think that we have a legislative environment that will support that kind of legislation. And when the legislation is passed, uh, they will negotiate a timetable upon which to test uh, the chemicals that haven't been tested. And the technical name of that uh, uh, law is the Tox- Toxic Substances Control Act, or TOSCA. And that is the backbone uh, law that, that should be protecting public health and the environment. So the top three things that this bill will do will be to test the most dangerous chemicals that exist within these products? Absolutely. Uh, first and foremost. And then what, what about holding the, the people, uh, you know, holding the industries that create these products responsible? Well, in Europe, where they have already passed similar legislation called REACH, uh, not only are they requiring testing of current chemicals, but they then have negotiated a phase-out time period in which these chemicals will be removed from the market. And thirdly, a much more rigorous regime that would be required before any new chemicals come onto the market. So wait a second. Well, for our listeners' sake, you're telling us that we are actually behind here. Europe is ahead of us on these, and they already have uh, similar legislation to what you are putting forward? We're years behind. Unfortunately, uh, because some of the businesses in the United States uh, spend so much money on our political system, they have avoided uh... making these kinds of legislative changes so in europe this law was passed over a year ago and uh... the legislate the legislation is well on the way of being implemented so yes unfortunately uh... when it comes to our health and safety uh... america is lagging way behind well when you say lagging bit right be, uh... way behind why don't you explain to our listeners how far behind that tosca really is in terms of being outdated and the amount of chemical that have been tested to the ones that are really the, the, the chemical compounds that exist out there versus how many have really been tested by the EPA. Yeah. So the amazing thing is that the Tosca law that is on the books today is 33 years old. We have not updated the law in 33 years. Oh. And uh, we all know how much we've learned in the last decade about what's dangerous. Well, we have not taken the responsibility to keep our laws up to date with our scientific knowledge. Uh, And what is more amazing is that less than five chemicals have been removed from the market uh, as a result of the very limited testing that we are doing today. So we have a totally inadequate system of protection, an inadequate system of control. And again, uh, you know, uh, unlike our legal system, uh, well, actually like our legal system, chemicals are innocent until they're proven guilty. So anybody can create any chemical, and until we accumulate enough information about the number of people that have gotten sick or have died, that chemical doesn't even begin the process of being removed from the market. And you would think it should be the other way around. You would think that if someone wants to sell a new chemical, they would have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that it was safe before it could enter the market. Well, Jeffrey, it seems like when it comes to uh, pharmaceutical companies, I mean, to get a new drug online, even if it, I mean, it's a boon to mankind, uh, sometimes the the testing and and vetting process seems to take literally decades in in some cases. But what you're saying is if you have a new chemical and you want to put it on the market as a cleaning product, have at it until we get enough people that uh, complain and... Maybe there's a link here between the sickness and your new product. Is that it? Well, there's, there's no question that uh, when you look at, uh, I mean, we are almost at a epidemic level when it comes to something like asthma. And even uh, when it 
comes to, to cancer. Uh, while there's been a reduction in cancers because of people smoking less, in general, all other types of cancer are on the rise, particularly cancers in children. And there is an absolute correlation between increases in disease and cancer and increased exposure to these chemicals. If you go to other parts of the world where these chemicals are not available, you see absolutely lower rates of illness. So we have the data. There's no question that these chemicals cause serious health problems. The issue is uh, putting regulations in place that prevent our exposure to these chemicals. Jeffrey, how did you get, uh, I, you know, I, I know you're getting a lot of support for this already. How did you get involved with Erin Brockovich, and how is she helping your Million Baby Crawl movement? Well, I mean, you know, Erin is a mom, and Erin has devoted her life to uncovering uh, these types of issues. So when we were thinking of someone who would be a terrific uh, partner and spokesperson for this campaign, uh, she seemed like the perfect person because she has lived personally with the terrible toll that toxic chemicals can take on a community. So she has been incredible. She's been out there every day promoting the legislation, promoting the Million Baby Crawl, and I think that she's helped bring awareness to the issue, credibility to the campaign, and has been a tremendous support. Well, I, I, I've, I had the chance once to meet her in a studio somewhere in New York. We were both on a show together, and I just think she's a true American hero, and I'm so happy that she's joined your cause. I think she, that's, she's a wonderful spokesperson, and I think she is just so tenacious and has so much credibility. I'm so glad that she's uh, helping the Million Baby Crawl move forward. So tell us, the Million Baby Crawl, what is... What's the next step, though? How can our listeners help their movement by getting involved politically? If they go to millionbabycrawl.com, is there a way for them to click on and write uh, to Congress or Senate or tell, them, tell our listeners uh, how to help out here? Well, there's three things they can do. Go online and create a crawler, which takes a minute. We will then help you write to your local Congress person uh, and ask them to support this legislation, and then, very importantly, email the site to all your friends and ask them to participate as well. And uh, we hope that uh, not only will we pass the legislation, but we will increase awareness among parents about how they need to be more cautious. Uh, and we will uh, ultimately... Uh, Take a group of people to actually descend down upon uh, Washington uh, in the coming months uh, as we hope to celebrate the passage of the legislation. You know, Jeffrey, we're down to the last minute or so here. Do you have a pearl of wisdom you want to leave for our listeners before we take the show out? Well, I'm, I'm, I also love to mention that uh, uh, I have a new book coming out in a couple of months called The Responsibility Revolution, uh, which talks about uh, a much more diverse array of ways in which businesses can be responsible, what's working, what's not working. And uh, we also, to teach more people about these issues, just announced last week something called the Sustainability Institute, where you can learn online uh, about how to be more sustainable. And again, this is mostly targeted to businesses, but their website is Institute Sustainability, and uh, you can learn all about the Institute at that website. Wonderful. Well, well Jeffrey, you have both uh, taught us so much today and also inspired us to be better in how we clean in our house. I want our listeners to go to two different websites right now, seventhgeneration.com. They could learn about all of Jeffrey's products and where to buy them and also get involved with millionbabycrawl.com. Like he said, don't leave it to the government. Take that control back in our hands. That law, Tosca, hasn't been reformed in 33 years, and we've got to take it back in our own hands and create our own future. Jeffrey Hollander, you are amazing. You have years of experience leading the Green Revolution before it was ever cool. You're inspirational, and you're still leading the great Green Revolution to a bright future. You are truly living proof that green is good.